Thank you, Will. If you have your Bibles with you this morning, we're going to be reading a couple verses from a couple different psalms. First of all, from Psalm 11, and then from Psalm 119. If you're able, would you stand for the reading of God's Word? From Psalm 11, we'll read verse 3. If the foundations be destroyed, what can the righteous do? That is a question we are dealing with right now, isn't it? And then from Psalm 119, verse 160. Psalm 119, verse 160. Thy word is true from the beginning, and every one of thy righteous judgments endureth forever. That means it never changes. May God add his blessing to the reading of his word. Bow your heads with me, please. Thank you, Lord, for your word. We ask that you will bless it and bless my words now in the name of Christ, we pray. Amen. You may be seated. What an understatement it is to say that life is full of hard choices. And they're getting harder all the time, aren't they? The cover story of the recent quarterly edition of the Nazarene Pensions and Benefits newsletter had a cover story on it entitled Hard Choices. It showed a big interstate road sign with the words Hard Choices on the sign and roads going different directions. We face hard choices on the road of life every day as a part of everyday living, don't we? Marriage is hard. Don't say that too loud next to your spouse on Valentine's Day. <laughs> Marriage is hard, but so is divorce hard. But we get to choose our hard. Being in debt is hard. But so is being financially disciplined. Again, we get to choose our hard. And that's what the article was about. Making the hard choices to be financially disciplined when you're young so that you can have a good retirement. Being a Christian is hard. Even though Jesus said his yoke was easy and his burden light. But to be a real Christian, I hope you've learned by now, uh, it always takes your all. But remember, or can you remember how hard life was when you didn't have the Lord in your life. Uh, so again, we get to choose our hard. Anything of value that commands our time and attention is typically not easy. I wish all the choices in life were easy. But the reality is that life is tough. And it is full of hard choices. The Lord made that clear in John 16, 33 that we preached on a couple weeks ago. That in the world you shall have tribulation. But be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. The implication is that we can be overcomers too. Through Jesus if we choose to make the right hard choices. And when we consider eternity and the fact that everything on earth is 
momentary, it makes hard choices all the more important because those choices that we make will determine what eternity will be like for us. One of the biggest hard choices we all must make is whether we are going to choose to believe the truth. <coughs> but before we can do that, we must settle in our mind what truth is. As a Bible-believing Christian, I believe that all truth begins and ends with Jesus. Because he declared in John 14, 6 that he was and still is the way, the truth, and the life. I believe the Bible to be the absolute word of God. And that is Psalm 119, 160 declares, Thy word is true from the beginning, and every one of thy righteous judgments endureth forever. That literally means that the sum of God's word is truth, and that it won't ever, ever change over time. And that is why it is so important that we stay rooted in the firm foundation of God's word. The message of that great old hymn we sang this morning may seem rather outdated to us, but the words and the meaning of the hymn are certainly not outdated at all. We need to stay rooted in the firm foundation of God's word. If we don't, we will get lost in more ways than one in the moral confusion of our day. Now, the sad truth about our nation is that the godless left now controls every major institution in America. The schools, the government, Hollywood, the media, and high-tech corporations have joined in now, and they have all been so successful at clouding the truth that now 74% of young adults over 12 years of age now either believe or somewhat agree that what is morally right or wrong changes over time based on what society says. Now that should be very alarming to us because nothing could be farther from the truth than that. They believe that truth is not based on any fixed laws of truth uh, found in the Bible, for instance, but on what society thinks, or even worse, what society feels. Truth is now based for many on what one feels. But what happens if what you feel turns out to not be right? I'm sure there's not a one of us here this morning that haven't felt something that was wrong. Uh, I heard Dr. Michael, Michael Youssef preaching a few weeks ago, and he said people used to say, what do you think? Now the question is, what do you feel like the answer is? We've stopped thinking and instead base what we call truth on what we feel. What an interesting and truthful observation that is concerning our present day society. Our kids, for instance, are not now taught in the public schools that truth and facts 
can change over time. Now consider how that translates into what we are seeing played out now in everyday life. If truth can change, <coughs> well then so can the meaning of what a man or a woman is. Think about that. If truth can change, we are now, because of that, teaching our kids the ridiculous notion that they can choose what their gender is, depending on how they feel about it. You and I grew up thinking that was settled when you were either born a boy or a girl. But that's now become outdated in our world of redefining truth. Now, if we accept the idea that men are women, then truth, science, and even sanity have all become things of the past. You can now be kicked off of social media for simply stating biological facts about gender. Consider what just happened to focus on the family of all things. Their Twitter account was recently suspended. What did they do to deserve that? They simply described President Biden's pick for Secretary of Health from good old Pennsylvania, Dr. Rachel Levine. They described him, her, it, or whatever this way. Dr. Levine, this is their exact words, Dr. Levine is a transgender woman that is, a man who believes he is a woman. That's the truth. But the powers that be are now telling us that you're not allowed to say that anymore. That is now considered hate speech. We'll get you kicked off of social media. So much for tolerance. And so much for following the science, a term the left only uses when it's useful. Now, I hope saying that doesn't kick up, get us kicked off of Facebook or YouTube. But how can you preach the truth if you're afraid to say the truth? I don't know how to say it any other way than by telling the truth the way the Bible presents it. And there's nothing in the Bible that says men are women. Matter of fact, it says just exactly the opposite. God created everything male and female. Could you imagine how different America would be right now if every pulpit in America had someone in it that wouldn't compromise the truth. Of course, that's why I'm no longer writing columns for the Valley Log. We've already seen how this works. They wanted me to tune, tone down the truth and present a more friendly version of religion, and I refused to do it. You see, at this point in my ministerial life, I don't want to have to stand before the Lord someday and try to explain to him why after years of preaching the truth that I now decided to compromise the truth because it was the popular thing to do. But a lot of preachers, and preacher, if you're listening and you've compromised the truth, a lot of preachers are going to have to do just that. Stand before the Lord and describe why they're doing what they're doing. And I assure you, the good Lord is not going to be pleased with any of them. When pulpits no longer proclaim what the Bible says, then confusion reigns in society. And we're seeing exactly that. 
So the pulpit is as much to blame for the moral confusion in our country as anybody. We can blame the left all we want and Hollywood and everything, but a lot of the fault for where we're at today goes right back to the pulpit. What hope is there for America if the church doesn't stay rooted in the foundation of God's word? None. Zero percent hope. Because instead of following the Judeo-Christian ethic grounded in the Ten Commandments as our guidepost for what is right and wrong, we end up with anything going. Wrong even being called right, and vice versa. It's no wonder there has been such a push in recent days to get rid of any display of the Ten Commandments in parks or courthouses or schools or, or any place. Because just seeing the Ten Commandments displayed reminds society of how far we have strayed from the truth of God's word. That Psalm 119, 160 says God's laws are eternal. And by changing them, we are going exactly against what that says to the detriment of society. <coughs> We're living in a day where we are being forced to make hard choices concerning what truth is. The day we live in is exactly what is described in Romans chapter 1. Verse 25 of that chapter says that men change the truth of God into a lie and worshipped and served the creature more than the creator, who is blessed forever. Now listen to me. You know all kinds of people who claim to believe in God and say they love God and worship God. A person may say that. They may think they are worshiping God, but you cannot worship the true creator if you have changed the truth of God into a lie. I don't care if you're sitting in a Christian church somewhere this morning. You cannot be worshiping the true creator if you have changed the truth of God into a lie. Verse 22 of that chapter says, professing themselves to be wise... They became fools, fools. Only a fool would try to change the truth of God's word. Jesus said in John 4, 24, God is a spirit, and they that worship him must not only worship him in spirit, but in truth, truth. So it is impossible to actually worship the true God unless you do it within the realm of all the truth that you know. And you certainly can't know God if you have rejected the truth. Wake up, church. If you got somebody in the pulpit who is a homosexual or says that's fine or that men can be women or whatever it is, you're worshiping at the wrong altar. <coughs> <coughs> Jesus said in John 8, 32, and ye shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. What kind of nonsense would it be to think that we could set men free from their sins outside of the truth 
found in the cross and the resurrection and the shed blood of God's virgin-born Son, Jesus Christ. <coughs> There's no salvation for anyone other than in the truth of those things. And yet the host of that vulgar game show, Family Feud, Steve Harvey, who claims to be another one of Hollywood's Christians, just joined a long list of celebrities in declaring that there are other ways to God other than through Jesus Christ. What other way? Tell me what other ways are there? Acts 4.12 is very specific in saying, neither is there salvation in any other. For there is none other name under heaven given among men whereby we must be saved. The hard choice today is to believe that fact, because it will get you persecuted and called hateful and intolerant. But the even harder choice is to believe something different, because that's going to cost you your eternal soul. And just think what somebody with the influence that Steve Harvey has is going to have to answer for. And people look at him as supposedly a Christian, and then he makes a statement like that. We live in a very divided nation, and yet those that have died, divided it are now calling for unity. Imagine how crazy that is. Faith in the Bible as the true word of God has all but been abandoned even within the church. True Christians like Franklin Graham, for instance, are now being publicly maligned. Moral absolutes are now being redefined. Our entire culture is in a crisis. But there's still hope. The hope is found in Jesus. Now hear me. The culture may have crossed the point of no return. Only time will tell if the direction we are now headed can ever be reversed again as a country. But individual lives can still be changed. But only by people who will make the hard choice to accept Jesus as their Savior and their only way of being saved and then make the hard choice to follow this as their rule of thumb. Those are the hard choices every person must make if we expect to go to heaven someday. There isn't another way. There isn't an easier way. The only way is to accept Jesus not as some good buddy or some good guy, but as the Son of God who died on the cross for your sins and who provides the only means of your salvation. To accept him as the one and only Son of God, <coughs> which taketh away the sin of the world, the Lamb of God. And if you do that, well, there's hope for you. Make any other choice. What can I say? 
It's not the right choice. And it won't get you anywhere. Stand with me and bow your heads, please. <coughs> I ran out of voice this morning. God knows what choices we're making. If you're making the wrong choices, I pray that you will come to your senses, turn around, and choose to make the right choice to follow Christ. Let's join together in a closing word of prayer. Jeff, would you please dismiss us with prayer? Heard this message.